Breakfast at the deli opens at 6 <clears throat> and I just went in there. It's like 8 o'clock, but I got a bacon, egg, and cheese and a peach tea. Well, hello. You are hiking with Jenny on the Appalachian Trail. Today's day 108. I just left the Corrado's Pizzeria and Deli where I camped and I'm headed back to trail. I have a shorter day today. I'm only going about 12 miles to get to Pauling, New York, where I have a reservation. So, happy town day! Today the terrain looks like it's going to be pretty nice. At the end we're going to be doing a road walk to get into Pauling, because it's not right off the trail, it's actually like, I don't know, like three miles off the trail. So I'm just going to walk, because I don't... I don't know. I don't know if I want to depend on shuttles and stuff. I'd rather just kind of be independent. So I'm just going to do the road walk. I've been all right with road walking. I kind of just try and pick the roads that are less busy to walk on and usually it works out. I think I recognize this, but I can't remember whose it is. I think I'm going to carry him to the next shelter. I think this is Bubbles. I think I saw her with one. Um, which means she probably skipped the deli last night and hiked straight to the shelter. But she'd be long gone because it is nine o'clock and everyone would have already left there by now. So I don't know where I'm, when I'm going to see her again. I guess I'll post somewhere and hope that she sees it. I don't know. I don't have her contact info. Look at that big tree. Beautiful. So I was able to get Bubbles' number from Rex who had it and I texted her to ask if this was her monkey but she says she has a monkey but she hasn't lost it. So, so this is uh, someone else's monkey and I don't know whose it could be and I'm pretty sure she's the only one I saw with a monkey. So. I think I'm going to leave it at the next shelter and then I'll make a post for that listing and hopefully someone that is looking for a monkey sees it. Because <laughs> I otherwise I'm just carrying this forever and uh, I don't know where or who that person is so at least he can be safe and out of the elements while he waits for his owner to collect him. First view of the day, climbing up to, I don't know if this is a mountain or what, but doing some climbing. It's just labeled as view on far out. So I don't know if this is a mountain, but uh, we're like, point three from the shelter where I was gonna probably take a break and drop off Mr. Monkey. Cool. New York Connecticut state line 17.9 miles. Mount Washington 420. It's interesting they put that there. And 753 to Mount Katahdin. Cool. So they have a little free library here, so I'm going to leave Mr. Monkey in here. And I'll post a little note on Far Out saying where he's at in case every, anyone uh, is looking for him. But he will be safe and happy in this nice little house. Something tells me these train tracks aren't used anymore.
All right, I'm on a four mile road walk to uh, my hotel. Um, so I looked up and this looked like the safest route to get into town to walk this way because you're not walking on like a busy highway. So, or at least not very long. So I decided that this is going to be the safest, most direct route, and maybe we'll see some cool things along the way. I think we're going to walk through a park that allows camping for AT through hikers, so that would be really interesting to see. Oh, I want to do a historic tour. Are we going to be walking along it? I don't know. Um, it's got trash can. Uh, looks like bathrooms. I don't know if these are open. But I guess we'll see. Okay, so bathrooms are open. Bathrooms look like they hadn't been cleaned in a long time, but they were working. Now that I'm on Main Street, there is a sidewalk. This is nice. So I'm going to get here pretty early. It's 2.22 and I can't check in till 3. So I think I'm going to stop at this cafe coming up for some lunch. So I'm at the Dancing Bear Cafe and I they have this lovely seating area outside in the back. And I got an iced chai latte and I got a caprese sandwich and a Tuscan tomato soup which is coming. So this is my room. This, it doesn't even look real. This is so nice. I think this is probably my, my nicest looking room that I've stayed in yet. It's very pricey, but this was recommended. I have the deluxe queen room. So that means that I have my own little veranda, which I know I'm having trouble opening, but I'll, figure this out after. Um, I've got a sink, bathroom, shower, little desk, huge TV, lots of windows. It's very cool in here so it's got a really good like what do you call that type of system? I always forget what that's called um, but yeah it's this is really nice. <laughs> okay so I was pulling on the door and it's actually, you have to push it. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I think I'm gonna like get a couple drinks and like sit out there later. So you know you're in a fancy place when it comes with bathrobes. <laughs> Luckily there was an auto parts store within walking distance of where I'm staying, so I was able to pick that up. Benefits of the alcohol stove is they're lightweight, cheap fuel. Usually these run about two bucks, that, this time it was like 350. But it's harder to find these than the canisters because not a lot of people use alcohol stoves, so stores don't really stock these that you know tend to cater to hikers so typically I've been able to find them either Walmart or auto parts stores have been the best bet all right I've got some healthy carbs on the side <laughs> And uh, I've never seen loaded cheese fries with like actual like big slices of bacon on it before. This place has millennial napkins, but I'm actually okay with that. So I'm at CVS and I immediately regret not resupplying here instead of that small store that had very little. And the prices are better here too. Never resupplied at a CVS before, but it actually worked. 
So here's something I thought of that surprised me about New York that I never knew. And I've been to New York a, a bunch of times, but I guess I never really paid attention. But it, it's very much the culture here that you get food and then you pay for everything afterward. And I, I'm not used to that. I'm used to like, I order and I pay up front. And a lot of times you go to like a deli, a pizzeria, a pub and and you settle up afterward <laughs> it was just different because it's like kind of honor system a little bit because they like a lot of times they don't keep track of what you got so you have to tell them what you got so i'd say the culture here surprised me and it was different in some ways different than any of the other states that i've been to and it's weird because it's so close to where I grew up that you wouldn't think. I wouldn't think that it would be that different, but it is. But it's cool. So I am in for the night and I got a medium ice cream from ta Tacos and Cones across the street. Um, so I got cookie dough and campfire s'mores. I did buy a beer that I really want to enjoy out on the veranda. And um, and Brian's going to call tonight. So I basically, I have everything I need. So earlier I went to the Family Quick Mart or something on the corner. And they didn't have a whole lot, but I was able to get a couple of ramen. And then this is a Kraft macaroni and cheese. And those are going to be my dinners. And then... When I was there, I didn't really have a lot of things to add to it for to boost the calories and protein and everything. So when I was at CVS, I got this. I figured I would add to one of the ramens. And then I got some cheese that I was going to add to um, the mac and cheese. I guess I was going to make it extra cheesy. <laughs> I have one um, chicken packet left from my last resupply, so I was going to add that for the third meal. So all these are now covered for extra protein. Now, I got this as a lunch possibility, and I guess this is going to be, I don't know, something, snack-ish. And then I got this for tonight. But I also got some more bars um, from the other place and some Swedish fish. I got three of these. I'm trying to eat more sugar. <laughs> I'm not a person that eats a lot of sugar. Um, even on trail, it's never been a thing that I did. Uh, but lately my sweat has been smelling like vinegar, which someone pointed out happens when you're eating too much protein and not enough carbs. <laughs> Who knew that was a thing? But for me, I guess, because I don't consume a lot of carbs, um, it's happening. <laughs> so <laughs> there's not a lot of carbs I can eat. Um, I'm actually intolerant to mannitol and gluten, but I still eat gluten. It's just, I try to limit it. I'm left with not very many options. Um, I There are some vegetables I can eat, but obviously it doesn't work um, easily to pack that stuff out on trail. So I've been eating a lot more sugar <laughs> lately and it's been helping actually. I, my sweat doesn't smell that bad anymore. So I guess for better or worse, <laughs> I am eating more candy <laughs> and soda and things. So. I I guess it's working for now. This is obviously going to be a temporary fix. When I get home, I have a bunch of dehydrated veggies that I'm going to bring and that'll I'll add those to my meal so I can get more healthier carbs, but for now this is what I've got. <laughs>